Welcome back to the Bean Museum, everybody. Uh, today's live video is going to be Discovery Reading. Uh, so we're going to be reading some really fun books. Uh, and if you guys have any questions or comments throughout the video, please feel free to comment them down below. And I'll try and answer them throughout, okay? So we're going to be doing some Discovery Reading today. We're going to be reading some really fun books about wetlands. Now before we get started, let's talk about what is a wetland. Wetlands are pretty easy when you think about the word. It's land that's wet. It's kind of, kind of a silly way to put it, but essentially it's rivers, lakes, marshes, all those things are wetlands. Now here in Utah, we have three different ecosystems that exist here. We have deserts, forests, and wetlands. Deserts make up 70% of Utah. Um, forests make up 20% of Utah, so can you guess what the, uh, how much wetlands make up? It's a little bit of math. We got 7 plus 2. What's the remaining one? It's going to be 10%. So, 10% of Utah is covered in wetlands. Um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it has a lot of variety in the life that we see. Um, so I'm right here in front of our wetlands exhibit our fresh water. Thank you, Katie, for <laughs> complimenting me on my haircut. Um, so I'm right here and we can see a couple of animals here that live here in Utah in our wetlands. You can see I've got some otters over here. I've got a kingfisher right behind me and a cute little fishy over here. I think that might be a chub. All right, so let's go ahead and read a book about an animal that lives in the wetlands. And if you guys can think of any other animals that live um, in ponds or streams or rivers or lakes or any of those things, you can go ahead and comment them down below, okay? So any animals you can think of that live in wetlands, we're gonna see a lot of examples in the two books we're gonna read. So we're gonna start off with a book called The Big Wide Mouth Frog. Now this is by Anna Martin Laranyenga, and, oh, Jeff says a platypus. Great job, that is definitely a wetlands animal. Um, this is by, uh, published by Candlewick Press. So we're gonna read a little story about this big wide mouth frog. Oh, and hold on just a second there. I need to reverse it so you guys can see there we go. Okay, back to what we were doing. Once there was a big wide mouth frog with the biggest widest mouth you ever did see. And one day that big wide mouth frog hopped off to see the world. So you can see he's living in his pond here on his lily pad. So this is a wetlands plant and that's a wetlands animal. But let's go see what other animals he meets too out in the world. The first creature he had met had big, thumping feet. What animal is that right there? It's a kangaroo. Hey, you big, thumping feet, who are you and what do you eat? Shouted the wide mouth frog. Well, I'm a kangaroo, said kangaroo. I eat grass. Well, I'm a big, wide mouth frog, shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. The second creature he met had a big black nose. What animal is that, guys? Looks like it's a koala bear. Looks like he's meeting some Australian animals in this book. Listen, Mr. Big Nose, who are you and what do you eat? Shouted the wide mouth frog. I'm a koala, said koala, and I eat leaves. Well, I'm a big wide mouth frog, shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. The third creature he met was hanging upside down. Ho oh, there, upside down creature! Who are you and what do you eat? shouted the wide mouthed frog. I am a possum, said possum, and I eat blossoms. Well, I'm a big wide mouthed frog, shouted the wide mouthed frog, and I eat flies. All these different animals he's meeting. All right. 
The fourth creature he met had three long toes. Look here, three long toes, who are you and what do you eat? shouted the wide mouth frog. Oh, I'm an emu, said emu, and I eat grasshoppers. Well, I'm a big wide mouth frog, shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. What do you think, which animal do you think he's gonna meet next? Maybe a platypus? That'd be pretty cool. Then the wide mouth frog met a creature stretched out on the riverbank like a knobby brown log. Hey, knobby brown log, who are you and what do you eat? shouted the wide mouth frog. Is it a log, guys? Not a log. Knobby brown log opened her mouth in a slow, wide, lazy smile. Good day to you too, she said. I'm a crocodile and I eat big wide mouth frogs. Who are you and what do you eat? Oh no, look at his little face. He's a little worried. Me? whispered the wide mouth frog, puckering his mouth into the smallest, narrowest mouth you ever did see. And there goes the big wide mouth frog, jumping off into the sunset. All right, that was a pretty silly book that we just read about a big wide mouth frog. And we saw two very distinct wetlands animals. I'm gonna move you over just a little bit here. I think I kicked the camera, there we go. We talked about two wetlands animals, we talked about the frog, but there was another one at the end, the crocodile, the one that looked like a log. Now I have here, this is an alligator leg. So this is the skin from an alligator. You can see his toes, these big claws that he has that help them to um, dig and help them to clamber onto land. Um, you can see all these scales like armor. So there is our alligator leg. Now sometimes I get the question, what's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? And there's a couple of differences between the two. Um, you can see the mouth shape of an alligator is more round in the front and a crocodile is more pointy. Um, they also have different teeth, uh, different tooth structures. Uh, so the alligator, all of its teeth that you can see point down, and a crocodile, some of them point up and down. But the biggest difference is that they live in totally different wetlands. So alligators usually live in freshwater wetlands. Um, so they live in um, the south in America. Um, so we can see lots of alligators there. Um, and then traditionally, or more often, crocodiles are found in more saltwater places. Um, but even if they are, there's not any places that alligators and the crocodiles live at the same time. So wherever you're visiting, um, if you're visiting a wetland that has one of the two, then you'll probably know if it's a crocodile or an alligator based on where you are. So, but there's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator. All right, guys. We are going to read our second book now, and this one has tons of wetland animals, okay? So this one's pretty fun. Um, and then afterward, we'll talk about two of the wet, two wetland animals that we'll see here in Utah, okay? So this one right here is called Deep in the Swamp by Donna M. Bateman, and it is published by Charles Bridge. Now a swamp is one kind of wetland, okay? So if you hear the word swamp or marsh or bayou, all of those are similar wetlands where there's a lot of um, mud and water and things like that. And there's lots of animals that live there. So let's see what animals we have deep in the swamp. 
first things first, who's on the cover? Our alligator. All right. All right. Deep in the swamp, in the warm morning sun, lived a mother river otter and her little pup one. Splash, said the mother. I splash, said the one. So they splashed and they played in the warm morning sun. You can see we got some river otters. Those are native here to Utah. And like I said, I got some right over, right over here, some river otters. Deep in the swamp, where the never wets grew, lived a mother snapping turtle and her little turtles too. Swim, said the mother. We swim, said the two. So they swam through the prairies where the never wets grew. There's mama snapping turtle. See their little baby snapping turtles. And these right here, these are all the um, lily pads. All the different plants that float on top of the water. Deep in the swamp, in a hollow cypress knee, lived a mother flame bird and her little chicks three. Sweet, sweet, trilled the mother, and sweet, sweet, trilled the three, so they trilled loud and long in their hollow cypress knee. You can see those little baby birds. It says this is a flame bird. Uh, we have slightly different birds here in Utah, but some that look pretty similar, you can find some really pretty yellow birds. Deep in the swamp, in a thicket on the shore, lived a mother marsh rabbit and her little bunny four. Snooze, said the mother. We snooze, said the four. So they snoozed all day long in their thicket on the shore. Little baby bunnies. We got one, two, three, and four. Plus mom. Deep in the swamp, where the water lilies thrive, lived a mother alligator and her little gators five. Bask, said the mother. We bask, said the five. So they basked in the sun where the water lilies thrive. If you don't know that word basking, it's when animals that are ectothermic, that are heated from the outside, so reptiles and insects and things like that, amphibians, it's when they lay out in the sun to absorb the sun's heat, to give them energy. Deep in the swamp, in a nest built of sticks, lived a mother blue heron and her little chick six. Soar, said the mother. We soar, said the six. So they soared through the sky near their nest built of sticks. See all those herons there? We also have herons here in Utah. I forgot to say, do we have alligators here in Utah? No, no alligators. We have a lot of these other animals that are here or something similar to them. Okay. Deep in the swamp where the cypress reached to heaven lived a mother damselfly and her little fly seven. Dry, said the mother. We dry, said the seven. So they dried their new wings where the cypress reached to heaven. Look at all those little tiny new baby new baby damselflies okay oh and something kind of interesting these little damselflies these look a lot like dragonflies don't they but their wings you can see when they're landed they fold back if they folded flat that would be a dragonfly so that's how you can tell the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly damselflies are also a lot smaller they're about this big and dragonflies are about Deep in the swamp, where the cattails grow straight, lived a mother bullfrog and her little froggets, froglets eight. Jump, said the mother. We jump, said the eight. So they jumped through the shallows where the cattails grow straight. Ooh, let's see what we have next. Some snakes. Deep in the swamp where the bamboo vines twine lived a mother rat snake and her little snakes nine. Climb, said the mother. We climb, said the nine. So they climbed up a pine where the bamboo vines twine. Fun page to read. Deep in the swamp in an underwater den lived a mother crayfish. 
and her little crayfish, Ten. Scurry, said the mother. We scurry, said the Ten. So they scurried after tadpoles near their underwater den. Do you see these little crayfish here? We have those here in Utah too. Some people call them crawdads. You can go fishing for them. They're like little, they're crustaceans. So similar to a lobster or a crab, they live in the same family as that. And they live in the wetlands. These guys are just the freshwater instead of saltwater like a lobster. All right guys, that is the end of the book. There's some cool pictures at the end here of all the different animals that we looked at. So if you ever check out a book like this, you can see all kinds of really cool pictures of all these different animals we looked at. Okay. Now, we talked about a lot of different animals in that last book. We had crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, uh, we had some herons, we had some snakes, we had a lot of birds. So let's look at some of the animals that I have here. I have here, this is an ornate box turtle. Now this is kind of a fun one to bring out for you guys. I wanted to bring out this specimen because I get the question all the time when I show people turtles. Is it a turtle or is it a tortoise? And the wetlands give us a really good opportunity to talk about this. So there is, well, you, you've heard of turtles and tortoises. Turtles are the ones that live in the ocean and they live in the water pretty much all the time. They only come out on land to lay their eggs. Tortoises live on dry land and they don't know how to swim. Well, at this point you might be saying, well, Marin, um, I'm a little confused because I've definitely seen some turtles that are on land and in the water. So which one is this? Like this little box turtle here. These guys do great in both the water and on land. And the reason for that, guys, is because he is not a turtle or a tortoise, despite the name box turtle. So he has that name, but he's actually part of a third group called the terrapins. So terrapins are those, all of those things that you see, all those turtle-like creatures um, that you see that are out, out basking on the rocks and then they dive into the water and then they come back out again. All of those are terrapins. Um, the ones that live exclusively in the water, those are turtles. And the ones that live exclusively on land, those are tortoises. And then our little terrapins here, they get the best of both worlds. Isn't that right, buddy? Now I want to show you one more wetland animal that you're probably familiar with. Um, you've probably seen a lot of these around here in Utah. Ta da! The seagull. Now, seagulls are our state uh, bird, specifically this kind of seagull, the California gull. Um, and you can tell that it's a California gull because it has this little red part on its beak here. Um, and, but, you maybe didn't know, there's actually several different kinds of seagulls. So this one right here, the California gold, this is the kind of seagull that we're gonna be seeing um, throughout the spring uh, and the summer and into the fall. If you see a seagull with a yellow beak with a little red spot on it, that's gonna be a California gold. But these guys don't like the winter all that much. So if you see a seagull during the winter, it's actually a different kind of gull. They also have a yellow beak, but they have a black ring around the beak. They're called a ring-billed gull. Um, so that's one of the differences. But there's even a third kind of seagull. You can see his legs here are kind of yellowy. There is a third kind of seagull that looks similar to the ring-billed gull and the California gull because he has a yellow beak, but he has pink legs and he's called a herring gull. So I bet you never even knew that there's so many different kinds of seagulls, you're probably just like, I don't know, they sit in the parking lot and they eat french fries, right? Well, these guys, there's lots of different kinds of seagulls, so keep your eye out for different kinds of birds and see if you can find differences between the animals that you see um, when you're out in the wild, especially if you're out in the wetlands because there's tons and tons of animals and insects and plants to see out there. All right, guys. That is all for Discovery Reading today. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely week. Um, if you join us again on Thursday, we'll be having another Discovery Reading and a Life Science Live chat on Friday. Um, so tune in to our website for those. Um, and if you have any questions or any more comments that you want to add after the video is over, um, you can go ahead and comment those and we'll try and answer those after the fact, okay? But for now, we'll see you all later.